Amigos, bienvenidos, I'm Isla Mirada, Florida. We have escaped the rain and cold of the California Republic to come drive this, the 2016 Buick or Opal Cascada. Um, so while we work on the full first drive review episode, why don't you and I go through a tech review? Now, a bit of housekeeping. I will admit I look different today, and that is courtesy of our friends at United Airlines. You see, a long, long, long time ago, I was incredibly proud to fly Continental Airlines to the point where they now call me an ex-con whenever I turn up at LAX, but I digress. Anyway, United Airlines has held my bag hostage, I believe in Newark, New Jersey, for the past 24 or more hours. Now, being that that is not going to change, that is not going to deter you and I from driving this car and talking tech. So, let's start where we always start, the engine. Also, bist du fertig? Uh, so this is David Dunbar Buick's most fabulous car, right? Well, not exactly. Uh, this specific car was uh, designed and engineered by the folks at Adam Opel AG in Russelheim, Germany. Uh, but it was the Buick engineers and people in Motown that said, you know what? We could really use a convertible. And I agree. So there are a couple things going on here that come out of Opel's, but also some things that come out of Buick's. So let's start with the engine. This is a 1.6 liter, four cylinder, direct injected turbocharged gasoline engine. Now, I'm just gonna cut to the chase here. This convertible weighs 3,979 pounds. So 1.6 liters really doesn't sound like a lot of power to motivate that much weight. But there are a couple of things going on here. Uh, so this is 200 horsepower, but more importantly, it's 207 pound-feet of torque. Now, the most interesting part about this is for 10 seconds, this will develop overboost and bring the torque up to 221 pound-feet of torque. So the only other car that you and I have actually driven that does that is a $180,000 Porsche 911 Turbo S. So it's got that going for it. Uh, anyway, uh, there are actually more uh, engines on offer in Germany, and we do cover them in the full first drive review, so make sure you come back for that. Now, the bits from Buick. So this is, think of this as like the big engine, the high horsepower motor in the Opel. But in the Opel model, it is only on offer with a manual transmission to handle that additional torque from the overboost. But Buick, they had a six-speed automatic that's currently in use in the Verano Turbo that could handle that kind of torque. Now, good, bad, or indifferent, the only transmission that is on offer in the U.S. is that six-speed automatic from the Verano Turbo. Now, this is all fine and good, but really, how does that translate to the road or driving dynamics? And for that, I think we need to talk about struts. Now, like the engine technology, there are a number of bits here that are liberally shared with other parties uh, on both sides of the Atlantic from General Motors. So I've been very honest with you guys in sharing that I have a soft spot in my heart for Buicks because I grew up at least half my formative years on Buicks. And now more modern day Buicks, Buick is really one of the only car manufacturers that offers a sedan with a turbo engine and a manual transmission on these shores. Now that car, the Buick GS, has way more torque than this car. So what they've done is they've taken the front suspension of that car and built it into this car. And that is to say the hyper strut suspension. So it's way more than a McPherson strut. Basically it's a strut that has a whole different assembly knuckle that connects the wheel, the brake, and all that stuff to transfer the torque to the front wheels. And the logic is to completely minimize torque steer in a front wheel drive vehicle. Works well on the GS. Come back for the full first drive review to find out how it works here. But this works in conjunction with an active stabilizer bar and hydraulic bushings. Now, this is all very fancy technology here that has worked in other General Motors cars, but the rear, let's just say, 
that's torsion beam. Now let's put aside some of the technology and focus on more of the interior, which in a convertible has more to do with the lifestyle of a car that has had the roof sawed off. Now, if I'm being completely honest, look at video or pictures of an Opel Cascada and look at this Buick, they're virtually identical. But in reality, there are 600 different parts between the two cars. Yes, one of them is the actual badge, but there's also the transmission and a lot of the bits that affect the mechanicals. But one of the big changes is on the inside of the car, and that is the seats themselves. Now, I am told that Europeans like firmer seats and Americans like softer seats. Now, my heritage is a European. I've lived in Europe twice, but I am a full-blooded American and I prefer firmer seats. So I'm a little bit confused by this one, but in reality, what Buick did was a softer compound of foam to change the makeup of the seat, which is to make it a softer seat. That also necessitated uh, different seat covers. So whether it's cloth or leather, they are different than the Opal version. Then look at the dash. Now this is standard fare Opal, which is to say logical, but very busy. I actually counted the number of buttons. There are 68 buttons on that dashboard. Now, I'm not a huge fan of like the unified controllers you see in Mercedes and BMWs. Like I much prefer the very logical layout of a really simple logical layout of the Porsche interiors. And I'd love to see that here. Now, moving on to really the most important part of this car, and that is it's a convertible. So like most German convertibles, which this qualifies as, uh, you can operate the top up to 31 miles an hour, up or down. Then once it's down, you've got the screen here and you've got a second one here. So you've got some protection from the wind buffeting, whether you have people in the back or not. Now that's about all of the bits that are technically related to the car and its transformation from Opel to Buick but that still leaves us with a very important question. So full disclosure, before we got to Florida, I was very much looking forward to driving this car. And it's because I've told you guys over the years, I have a soft spot in my heart for Buick. And really, if you look at 2016, it is kind of a huge year for Buick because they're introducing this, they're introducing the Envision crossover, and they're introducing the LaCrosse. So three cars in one year from a company that hasn't come out with a new car in the past three or four years. So let's just say it's kind of a big deal. Now put aside all those other cars. As I've been driving this car in and around the Keys of Florida, the thing that I can't stop with thinking is what the hell does this thing compete with? Because this, the way this one sits here with the 4G system and the leather seats and the premium super duper model, is 37,000 US dollars, which really puts it straight across the plate of many cars, at least that I can think of. So you got a Camaro, you got a Mustang, you got an Audi A3, I believe you have a BMW 2 Series as well. So that's just what I came up with. But for 37,000 US dollars with a folding top in the US, what do you think this car competes with? You know what? I'm going to open this up to the rest of the world because there is an Opel Cascada. So my question to you is this for the avoidance of doubt. What do you think the Buick and the Opel Cascada compete with? Let me know what it is, why you think that car is competitive to this car, and for good measure, I have to ask, what region of the world do you hail from? Let me know in the comments below or via our social media, Motoman TV, all one word, Motoman TV, all one word, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And I want to leave you now with three things. Of course, number one, make sure you download our fancy new mobile application. Uh, you can download it for free from Apple iTunes or Google Play. Number two, make sure you come back for our very, um, you know what? I'm not going to say fancy, but I'm going to say special first drive review episode of this car because we find something very cool here in the Florida Keys, uh, and we also see a bit of the Florida Keys. And number three, I want to say thank you to United Airlines for holding my bag hostage. So with that, bis später.